A few years ago, knowing basic Python could land you three job offers. Look, I got this job offer from Amazon. How? All you wrote was this. Holy shit. Yeah, I know, right? 350k total compensation. But now, most people can't even get one interview. So I've been actively looking for a job. There's no jobs. It's been really difficult. We were told that learning to code was the way to make it. It was a way to get insane compensation packages, and then, almost overnight, it all changed. So what happened? Is the golden era of tech officially over? <laughs> well, that, my friends, is a complicated question. The answer is yes and no. Yes, it's harder to break into the industry as a junior engineer. You're not just competing with other junior engineers, but way more experienced engineers that know a lot more than you do. They have a lot more experience, contacts, connections, and they've worked in big tech and they're willing to work for less, and they're willing to work in junior roles. That's our competition. But at the same time, there are entirely new roles and job opportunities that are opening up, ones that aren't even being talked about, and they're driven by the rise of AI and automation. So this is not the end of tech, not even close. It's the end of one era and the beginning of another. And today, I wanna to explain exactly what changed and how you can take advantage of the new era of tech. So. Let's get into it. So back in 2020, the world went largely online. People were shopping online more, they were using streaming services, and they were even working from home. And software engineers were at the center of that shift. Demand for digital services exploded as companies rushed to build e-commerce, cloud platforms, remote work tools, and automated systems. So according to job market data, roles like software developer and software engineer saw major growth, with postings up nearly 47% and tens of thousands of new job listings in the United States alone. The U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics projected that software developer roles would grow roughly 17 to 18% through the decade, which is much faster than the average growth for all other occupations. But then something changed. After years of rapid expansion, hiring slowed significantly, especially for entry-level roles. In 2025, job postings for software developers hit multi-year lows, with some reports showing around 35% fewer listings than during the 2020 boom. Meanwhile, tech layoffs continued. Layoff. Layoffs. 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 YouTube and Meta have all announced new rounds of layoffs. With more than 95,000 tech jobs cut in 2024, and over 126,000 in 2025 in the U.S. alone. <laughs> but what we're seeing isn't the disappearance of tech it's a restructure in the industry, or as investors like to call it, a market correction. The explosive hiring of the pandemic was driven by urgent demand for digital transformation. Now, as the economy stabilizes and AI begins to automate many tasks, companies are re-evaluating skills. They're becoming more selective and they're prioritizing more senior, specialized roles over wide open entry-level pipelines. In other words, the golden era of getting an easy tech job has evolved, not ended. It's shifting towards more opportunities opportunities in AI, infrastructure, data, and emerging technical fields, even as these traditional paths start to tighten. Okay, so what does this new era of tech actually look like? Because despite everything you're seeing, there is a silver lining. I promise. The biggest driver of this shift is AI moving from experimental to operational. Companies don't just want models anymore. They want systems that do work. That's why the fastest growing opportunities aren't just coding jobs, but jobs that sit at the intersection between AI, automation, security, and real world systems. I mean, look at that robot. That's a nice robot. Okay, so we still have some work to do, obviously but we're already seeing demand exploding for roles like AI automation engineers. And they design workflows where AI doesn't just answer questions, but they trigger actions across tools and systems. Think agentic workflows. That's a big one nowadays. But even AI security engineers who focus on adversarial attacks, model abuse, data poisoning, and securing AI pipelines. Those were problems that didn't even exist a few years ago. Data quality and data set auditors, their job is to make sure that the AI models are trained on clean, reliable, and legally compliant data. And even systems and infrastructure engineers, they understand how to deploy AI reliably at scale. So from GPUs to edge devices to orchestration layers that keep everything running smoothly and safely. And the reason this all feels so chaotic right now is because we're in a transition period, people. We're in transition. 
The demand is real. Companies know that they need these capabilities, but the job titles, career paths, and the hiring pipeline, they haven't all caught up yet. Universities aren't teaching this and boot camps aren't structured for it. Most people are still training for the old version of those jobs, not the ones that are being created right now. That's the biggest problem. And here's the key thing to understand out of all of this. We're not going back to the era where learning basic syntax or frameworks was enough to get hired. In this era, the value comes from understanding systems in their entirety, orchestrating AI with real workflows, securing intelligent software, and bridging the gap between models and production. Coding still matters, but it's no longer the finish line. It's the foundation or the starting point. So, like I said earlier, most universities and boot camps have not caught up to this new era of tech. Traditional computer science programs still focus heavily on theory, which is valuable, but rarely do they teach how AI systems are actually built, deployed, secured, and maintained, and orchestrated in production. And as a result, much of this learning happens on the job, or through targeted self-study using industry-backed resources. So if you can't learn all of this on the job because you can't get a job until you learn all these skills, how do you actually learn all of this? How? Well, let me tell you. The first step is differentiating between foundational skills versus specialized skills. Foundational skills still matter. That's learning how to code, understanding data structures, understanding system design. Those are all non-negotiable. In fact, those are just the starting point now. Remember how I told you the era of easy tech is gone? Now it's a little bit more complicated because the easy way of getting a job is now the first step to getting a job. <laughs> So the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics and industry hiring data consistently show that roles involving distributed systems, cloud computing, and backend engineering still require strong fundamentals. So if you're aiming for AI infrastructure roles, you'll still need to know cloud platforms, networking, scaling systems, and failure modes. Those are concepts that are always covered in your system design class, but now they're just applied to AI scale. So on top of that foundation, specialization is where all the new opportunities are popping up. So pay attention. For example, engineers moving into AI and machine learning often start with Andrew Yang's deep learning AI courses, which can be found on Coursera or just, you know, deep learning. So programs like machine learning specialization, deep learning specialization, and generative AI with large language models, they're widely used by engineers at Google, Amazon, and Meta. These Courses, they don't just teach models. They focus on how real world machine learning systems are trained, evaluated, and deployed. If you're interested in AI automations and agentic workflows, platforms like Langchain, OpenAI, and UiPath are really great resources for that. They're actually becoming the industry standards. Learning how to build agents that call tools, interact with APIs, reason over tasks, and operate inside workflows is increasingly valuable. UiPath, for example, offers free training through its UiPath Academy, where engineers can learn automation, orchestration, and agent-based workflows hands-on using real tooling. And it's not just theory. Security is another area seeing rapid transformation. That's right. And traditional cybersecurity knowledge is still required. But now companies are hiring people who understand AI specific threats. So according to research from organizations like NIST and MITRE, new attack surfaces like prompt injection, data poisoning, and model inversion in relation to AI are becoming major concerns. So courses and certifications that combine security and AI, that's what you want to do. These include cloud security training courses from AWS or Google Cloud paired with ML fundamentals are becoming increasingly relevant. For data-focused roles, the emphasis is shifting from just training models to data quality, bias detection, and monitoring. That's three. Companies are investing heavily in machine learning ops and governance, so courses like ML Ops Specialization on Coursera and industry tools like ML Flow, Kubeflow, and data observability platforms are now part of production workflows. And engineers who understand how to audit data sets, monitor model drift, and ensure compliance of the system are in high demand as AI systems move into regulated industries like healthcare and finance. And here's the most important part. You don't need to learn everything all at once. Why am I whispering? The engineers that excel in this era are the ones that combine strong fundamentals with one or two deep practical specializations. So whether that's AI infrastructure, security, automation, or applied machine learning, the goal isn't chasing every new tool. It's understanding how real systems work end to end. So no, tech isn't dead. 
just the easy version of it. The era where learning a single language or grinding a few leak code problems and coasting into a cushy job is all fading fast. And honestly, that version of tech was never meant to last. What's replacing it is harder, more complex, and honestly, way more interesting. We're entering an era where the most valuable engineers aren't just the ones that can learn how to write code, but it's people who understand systems. They understand AI and how it fits into the bigger picture. It's how automation scales across organization, how intelligent software needs to be secured, how it needs to be monitored, orchestrated, and productionized into the world. That's uncomfortable, and it's messy too. And yes, the bar is obviously way higher, but why would you have it any other way? It also means there's a massive opportunity for people to learn more and adapt earlier. So if it feels like the ground has shifted under your feet overnight, you're not crazy. It did shift. But this isn't the end of a career path. It's a fork in the road. You can keep training for a tech industry that no longer exists, or you can start building the skills for the one that's being created right now. The golden era of tech didn't disappear, so don't disappear alongside of it. It belongs to the engineers that are willing to evolve. So if you like this video, check out some of my other recent videos that I've posted. They're very helpful in helping you determine what skills you will need for the future of the tech industry. So until next time, peace out.